the Avro 621 first flew in September 1929. Designed by Roy Chadwick, it was a private venture intended to replace the Avro 504, which in its earliest form had entered service in 1913 and wouldn't be retired until 1934. Unlike the 504, which was largely wooden, the 621 was nearly all metal. The fuselage was a welded steel structure, and the wings had metal spars and ribs. An Armstrong Siddeley radial engine was fitted, either a Mongoose or a Lynx. The definitive model, its Lynx engine enclosed in a town end ring, became the Avro Tutor, standard training aeroplane for the Royal Air Force until the late 1930s. A scaled down version, named the Avro Cadet, was aimed at the civilian market. It sold modestly well, but one criticism was the lack of folding wings. Avro responded to this by producing the Club Cadet, a similar aircraft but with reduced wing stagger, meaning the wings could be folded. The five Club Cadets operated by Airwork at Heston were later re-engined with a Gypsy Major. This vastly changed their appearance. As an experiment, Avro constructed the Cabin Cadet, largely based on the Club Cadet. Powered by a seven-cylinder Armstrong Sidley Genet, it was configured for three, the pilot sitting centrally ahead with two passengers behind on a bench seat. In comparison to its main rival, the de Havilland Leopard Moth, the cabin cadet had a somewhat frumpy appearance. It did not go into production and a second aircraft was not completed. Avro did, however, complete a three-seat club cadet the forward fuselage was widened, seating two abreast ahead of the pilot. Nine were built. In 1920, a young journalist, Grace Lethbridge, married an aristocrat 49 years her senior. By 1926, she was a wealthy widow. In 1929, she became the first woman to circumnavigate the globe by air as a passenger on the Graf Zeppelin. In 1933, she bought a Waco cabin biplane, having it shipped as deck cargo from the United States to Europe aboard the SS Bremen. The Waco was a rugged, handsome aircraft. One can't help but think the Avro company took notice of it because in the summer of 1934, the first Avro Commodore appeared. Like the Waco, the Avro Commodore had significant stagger the main spar of the lower wing being directly under the rear spar of the upper wing. The wings were braced outboard with streamlined metal end struts and a single compression strut ran to the upper wing root. The Waco had no bracing wires at all, but the Avro, subject to the usual British belt and braces approach, had a single flying wire on each side. The wire wasn't there as much to transmit lift loads as to prevent the compression strut buckling under any circumstance. The aircraft could carry five, two pilots forward and three passengers on a bench seat behind. As usual for the time, there was a throwover control column. The Avro passed its certification trials at Martlesham Heath in May 1934 and was delivered to its owner. He only kept it one year before selling it back to Avro's. Of course, the aircraft was demonstrated to the press and generally received good reviews. The next two Avro Commodores were sold to Captain the Earl of Amherst and Messrs Airwork respectively. They were both to be used for air taxi work out of Heston, but in fact both were sold to Egypt in 1935 and eventually transferred to the Royal Egyptian Army Air Force. The fourth Commodore was delivered to Major John Shaw of Wellburn Hall, Kirkby Moorside in September 1934. Major Shaw seemed to favour Avros. He also owned an Avro cadet. He operated the Commodore until 1940, when it was impressed into military service. Operated as a taxi by the Air Transport Auxiliary, in August 1941 it crashed at White Waltham. Pilot 2nd Officer Henry Taylor later succumbing to his injuries. The 5th Avro Commodore was sold to Armstrong Whitworth Aircraft Limited of Whitley, Coventry. They used it for communications duties until 1940, when it was impressed. However, it was scrapped in 1942. The sixth and last Commodore was delivered to the splendidly monikered Harold Lestrange Tyndale Bisco. 
Bisco was an instructor at the Madras Flying Club, and the Avro was bought on behalf of the Maharaja of Vizianguram. Delivered in October 1934, it was returned a year later as being totally unsuitable for operations in India. It was dismantled by Avros at some point in the late 1930s. The last survivor was the prototype. It was operated by Avros as a company hack until 1939 and then stored. It was scrapped around 1950. Thank you for watching.